Remember when the big show went from delivering awesome choke slams? To using just a punch to finish his opponents. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. That is just a sample of wrestlers downgrading their finishing moves, and it only gets worse from here. Number 10, Kevin Owens. When KO made his WWE debut in 2014, he immediately introduced his finisher, the pop up powerbomb. Kevin Owens again. Oh. The finisher was a faster and more vicious looking version of the classic powerbomb thanks to Owens catching his opponent in midair. The move was KO's one and only finisher for about four years, then he changed it. Around 2019, Owens began using the stunner, specifically the version that Stone Cold Steve Austin would use. While the pop-up powerbomb would still be part of KO's arsenal, the stunner became the move that got the job done. The reason behind the change was that Kevin Owens wanted a finisher that would excite fans. Yeah, because the pop-up powerbomb was just so boring. I know the argument is that only smaller wrestlers could take the pop-up powerbomb, but I don't know, Mark Henry took it pretty well. The stunner's a great finisher, but it's not Kevin Owens' finisher, which is a big reason why it's such a downgrade. However, I'll gladly take a stunner compared to the finishers we're about to see at number 5 and below. Before that though, number 9, The Undertaker. Now don't worry, I'm not talking about the Tombstone Piledriver, the Chokeslam, or even the Last Ride. Those finishers were all great. The finisher I'm talking about is one you might not even remember. In the early 2000s, the Dead Man turned heel. This wasn't The Undertaker's first time playing the villain, but one of the issues was that fans still usually cheered him. I mean, he is The Undertaker. To combat this, the Phenom decided to change up his moveset. The new finisher Undertaker adapted was the TCB, taking care of business. The finisher was a standing dragon sleeper that the Phenom used to force his opponent to submit. It's not the worst finisher ever, but compare this to finishing moves Undertaker used before and tell me the TCB isn't a downgrade. I get why he did it, but come on, this guy has killed people, sacrificed a woman, and thrown a man off a 20 foot structure. There's no way fans are booing the Undertaker just for using a less flashy finisher. Number 8, Austin Theory. If CM Punk's GTS is just a bit too exciting for you, then try Austin Theory's ATD, or A-Town Down. It's the same idea as the go to sleep, but instead of lifting his knee into the air to hit his opponent, Theory plants his knee. Now, it's not terrible, but there's just something that makes it anticlimactic. Maybe it's the fact that the wrestler taking the finisher is basically on the map by the time the move connects? I don't know. All I know is there's something missing. What gives the A-Town down a spot on this list though, is when you see what Theory was using before he came to WWE. Austin Theory's previous finisher was the A-Taxia. Theory flipped his opponent into the air, causing him to land on their face. What's even sadder is that Austin Theory does use this move in WWE from time to time, but not as his finisher. When you see what Theory has in the Ataxia, how can you call the A-Town down anything but a downgrade? Number 7, Bailey. I honestly don't know how it's possible to go from a bad finisher to an even worse one, but wrestlers find a way. So when Bailey started her WWE career, she was the most huggable woman in sports entertainment. As such, her finisher was a belly-to-belly -belly suplex, or the Bailey-to-belly. -belly. The reason being, because it looked like she was giving her opponent a hug. I'll admit, it's clever, but a belly-to-belly -belly suplex is not a finishing move. After a few years on the main roster, Bailey finally got a new finisher. You would think that there'd be nowhere to go but up. But nope, apparently there were still a few levels below the basement. Bailey's new finishing move would become the Rose Plant. Basically, Bailey grabs her opponent by the head and arm and drives the woman's skull into the mat. That sounds vicious, but in actuality, the move never really seems to have much impact. Occasionally, an opponent might sell it really well, but that's not often the case. Now, why do I say the Rose Plant is a downgrade from the Bailey to Belly? Well, with the B2B, there was a lot more impact due to both Bailey's body and her opponents falling onto the mat, especially when Bailey would hit it from the middle row. The Bailey to Belly still isn't good, but I'll take it over the Rose Plant simply because it consistently looked impactful. While the Rose Plant is bad, we're starting to enter the really bad finishers, so brace yourself. Number 6, Seth Rollins. In 2015, Rollins infamously lost the curb stomp because WWE deemed it too violent. They ended up reversing that decision about three years later, but in the meantime, Rollins needed a new finisher. He eventually settled on the pedigree, but before that, Seth experimented with a different finisher. Rollins started using a DDT, but instead of falling backward, he fell forward. I'll give WWE and Seth Rollins props for making it unique, 
but this finisher was still a downgrade. The curb stomp was, and is, a powerful looking move, and it fit really well for a heel. He's literally shoving people's faces into the ground. This forward falling DDT could have been worse, but it wasn't a great replacement. Someone must have agreed, because Seth Rollins didn't use it for that long. In fact, the finisher never even got a proper name. That's how short-lived it was. As stated, Rollins eventually adopted Triple H's pedigree, which, while not original, was a better finisher, and it fit with his character, being the protege of the Camp Kings. Okay, we're halfway through. Now we're getting into the really bad finishers, so there's no turning back. Number five, Luchasaurus, AKA Kill Switch. Don't think that AEW wasn't exempt from this video. One of Luchasaurus' standout abilities was that, despite his size, he could still move around pretty well. That Lucha in his name wasn't just to be cute. His choke slam and saying moonsault finisher wasn't unique, but it was a good one-two combo. But I would argue the Tombstone Face Buster or Tombstone Age was even better. It had a clever name, and it was just a devastating and unique move. Well, that all got thrown out once Luchasaurus joined Christian Cage and became a heel. Instead of all those moves, Luchasaurus started using a lariat to the back of the head as his finisher. Like with The Undertaker, I'm sure the reason for the less flashy finisher is that Luchasaurus, or Kill Switch as he's known now, is to avoid having people cheer for him. However, the finisher just looks kind of lame. It looks like a clothesline, but instead of chopping someone's throat, he's just giving them a hard pat on the back. JBL had a similar finisher, the clothesline from hell, but that looks devastating. Stating. And on top of that, JBL was a heel for most of his career. All I'm saying is, I get that fans aren't supposed to cheer for Lucha Kill Sora Switch, but did his finisher have to be downgraded this much? Number four, John Cena. Now, I'm not talking about John Cena's submission finisher, the STF. Formerly known as the STFU, the STF can actually be a pretty sick move. However, the way John Cena performs it is pretty bad. More times than not, it looked like John Cena was squeezing his opponent's head with the sides of his arms, rather than choking them out. While I do think the STF was a downgrade from the attitude adjustment, there is one finisher that was much worse. Which one is that? The Lightning Fist. Back when a lot of hardcore fans hated John Cena, the wrestling community nicknamed Cena's signature moves the Five Moves of Doom. Eventually, John Cena got in on the joke and said he would debut a sixth move. What was that sixth move? The Lightning Fist. Cena would cross his arms and then smack his opponent with the back of his fist. Now, this move would be lower on the list, but it's clear that it's supposed to be a joke. It would be kind of like saying Santino Morello's Cobra is a bad finisher. Technically, yes, but it's supposed to be humorous. However, just because something's supposed to be funny doesn't mean it is. After a few matches, John Cena retired the Lightning Fist, and it's not hard to see why. Number three, Chris Jericho. Some people would argue that whenever Jericho debuts a new finisher, it's a downgrade. I won't say I agree, but I won't say I disagree either. However, I will say that the Juice Effect is a downgrade from the Code Breaker and the Walls of Jericho. Y2J just spins around and hits his opponent in the head with his elbow. Now, I can already hear the comments. LOL, bro's never been in a real fight. I get that a spinning elbow is a real martial arts move that can knock people out when done right. However, necrophilia is a real thing too. Doesn't mean the Katie Vick storyline was great. One of the problems with the Judas effect is that it doesn't look like it connects a lot of the time. In all honesty, it looks like something you would see when a wrestler accidentally hits the referee. I get that the Judas effect is easier on the body than the code breaker, but that doesn't stop it from being a downgrade. Number two, R-Truth. When R-Truth made his WWE debut, or return depending on how you look at it, his finisher was the corkscrew scissors kick. Truth had been using this during his time in TNA, and it was a fine enough finisher. Not one of the grades, but it highlighted his athleticism, he could hit it on anyone, and it looked brutal enough, with it appearing like Truth had kicked his opponent in the back of the head. Then, for some reason, R-Truth's finisher changed. He began using the lie detector, which is actually a pretty good name, and that's where it stops. I think Truth is supposed to hit his opponent with his forearm, but it always looked like he was just smacking into them with his body. This would make for a great comeback move, but it didn't make for a convincing finish at all. And R-Truth did win matches with this. His first major championship in WB was won by using this move. Luckily, Truth would ditch the lie detector in favor of the little Jimmy. Now, while this was a pretty big downgrade, simply because of how bad the lie detector was, things become a lot worse when a wrestler replaces a great finisher with a terrible one. Are you ready to see it? And number one, Sasha Banks, aka Mercedes Monet. Submission finishers can be hit or miss. There are some awesome ones like the ankle lock 
And there are some bad ones, like John Cena's previously mentioned, SDF. Sasha Banks' bank statement falls into the awesome category. Sasha made the move vicious by really pulling on her opponent. Also, the knees to the back and the roll through made the bank statement that much more brutal. What really sold it though, was seeing Sasha bend her opponent's body. Kind of like the walls of Jericho, seeing Banks sink her opponent's head back is what helped make it look so painful. As far as submission finishers go, I would say the bank statement is in the top 10, maybe even the top five. Now after Sasha Banks abrupt exit from WWE, she not only changed her name to Mercedes Monet, but also changed her finisher. This new move is called the Moneymaker. I mean, the name is pretty good, and that's about all I can say that's good about it. The finisher just lacks any real impact, and it falls flat. Literally. The Moneymaker looks like sort of a weird arm drag, where instead of the opponent getting thrown onto their back, they just land on their stomach. Some opponents seem to take the move alright, but not a lot do, and when you compare the Moneymaker to the bank statement, it's Monopoly money versus cold hard cash. Now, what's even more surprising is that there are finishers actually worse than the Moneymaker. If you dare to see those, watch the video on screen.